My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I wanna talk about what dividend investors get wrong and what most new investors overlook and don't understand. So I'm gonna talk about you know, the contrarian view. The first part of this video, I'm gonna talk about the most common things that you know people say against dividend investing. And then I wanna really focus on one piece and that is the total return. That's gonna be the main focus of this video is helping you understand what is the total return. So that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. But if you're new to the channel, once again, my name is Jake. I, My wife and I, we live down here in Austin, Texas with our little baby boy. He's one and a half now. And we're pretty normal people. My wife is from Germany. You know, when she moved to the United States five years ago, she was actually in debt. She didn't have any money to her name. She actually had a minus sign uh, next to her name when she moved over here. That's another, that's a whole topic for another video. I wasn't too excited to hear that when I first found out about it. I think uh, it's important to understand I'm just a normal guy. I have a day job. I was not hand fed. I don't, I didn't, you know, I didn't have a silver spoon growing up. I think really what set me up for success really long term was living beneath my means, being frugal. When I think about money, not just thinking about the money itself, but translating it into, okay, this, you know, ham sandwich or this burrito costs one hour of my time working. And so from a very early age, I understood that and I understood to respect money and to not take advantage of it, not to get into debt, not to spend more than what I had. And so from a very young age, I learned those concepts. But my wife and I, we work our butts off. On the other end, you know, we're actually just very normal. I love playing video games. I love playing video games on the weekend. I love relaxing and going to the park with our little baby. The reason why I'm saying all this is I'm just a normal guy. I don't have decades and decades of experience. I'm not a fund manager. I didn't work at a bank. I didn't work in an investment firm. Everything that I talk about here on my YouTube channel, I learned it for myself. And I learned it, a lot of it through trial and error. And I learned it from reading a ton of blogs, watching a ton of videos, reading books and articles on what I talk about. And it's become a passion of mine. But when I first started investing, I was a complete noob. I was horrible. I There was such a steep learning curve. When I first started learning about dividend investing, a lot of the mistakes and the things that we're gonna talk about in this video, I made a lot of those. And when I was first investing in the stock market, it looked a little like this. Oh my gosh, oh, I gotta love it. All right, so for those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you know that I have a weird sense of humor. It's just kind of how I am, I'm a bit weird. But uh, anyways, if you're weird as well and you wanna follow me on Instagram, um, I'm gonna try to be more active there. Uh, you can go and you can connect with me here on Instagram. It's another way that we can connect and uh, you know be weird together. All right, so first off, I wanna start with talking about what are the reasonable arguments against dividend investing? And I love to see both sides. I love to listen to videos and, and podcasts of people saying why they don't like dividend investing, why, why it's a bad idea. I love seeing the, it through the eyes of a contrarian. I love playing you know, devil's advocate here. I wanna understand you know, what I don't miss, maybe necessarily know. So these are the th six reoccurring themes that I see over and over again, and I'm sure there's more. But the thing that I want to highlight here is all six of these are valid points. Each one of these points here that we're going to talk about very briefly, they're valid. But it, there's also like that's the big thing that I want to emphasize is but. Yes, but. So let's talk about it. Let's let's look at the first one here very quickly. Um, you know, when it when it comes to reasonable arguments against dividend investing first, you know, the dividend is never guaranteed and it can be cut. Absolutely, that is completely correct. That is true. That's why I love looking at, you know, investing in the dividend aristocrats, companies with a proven track record, but even then it's never a guarantee. So yeah, the first point, dividends can be cut, absolutely valid. That's something that a lot of new dividend investors get wrong when they invest in the dividend stocks is they fall for that yield trap, right? Massive yield, but then it, then it gets slashed, dividend gets cut and the share price gets cut in half, right? So yeah, absolutely valid. The second thing, now the second one here, I hear this more and more 
with advocates for the fire movement. So I listen to a few, you know, fire podcasts and I, I really enjoy it. And whenever they talk about dividend investing, my ears are always wide open. Okay, I'm like, all right, you got my, okay, you have my attention. And this is what they usually say, that they don't like investing in a dividend investing because it's focused just on a small area of the stock market. And that's absolutely true. It's true. A lot of companies that pay a dividend are more mature, blue chip, established companies that have been around for a while. They have free cash flow. They're not hyper unprofitable growth stocks. Yeah. So, yeah, that is an absolute valid point that when you're investing in the dividend stocks, you're generally skewing towards more towards just one segment of the market. And that's true. Now, is it necessarily a bad thing to prevent me from investing in the dividend stocks? Eh, not really, but it's definitely interesting to hear, you know, what other people have to say about. It. The third thing is total returns matter. Now, this is the most common theme when it comes to, you know, dividends are irrelevant, dividends don't matter. It's because of this. This is what everyone's talking about. Whenever, whenever someone's trashing on dividend investing, they're usually talking about this, is that the total returns. Why invest into Coca-Cola when you could invest into uh, you know, a high growth stock that is growing 10 times faster? It's a fair argument, and that's why we're gonna talk about it more later in this video. The fourth one here is you have to be rich, right? Dividend investing, it only works if you're rich. I mean, yeah, it's kind of true. I mean, it kind of makes sense. It's all relative. It depends on your expenses and, and how you define rich. But I think, you know, if you truly understand compound rates, then yeah, I mean, you have to be rich, but everyone can be rich. You can be a millionaire after 20, 30 years with just investing $50 a month. So it's all relative. But I will say it's a reasonable argument. Yeah, it takes money to make money. Uh, so it is a valid, valid argument. Um, the fifth thing here that dividend investing, it underperforms the market. Well, actually, it really depends on how you view this, right? So the dividend aristocrats, when you compare the dividend aristocrats versus the broader market, you know, there's been studies done that the dividend aristocrats actually outperform the broader market. But it really depends on what market cycle we're in. Right. So if we're in a boom or a bust, right, what's going on with the Fed? What are interest rates? And so whenever you're comparing performance, make sure that you're looking beyond just, you know, a couple of years, look in decades. And that's how you really capture, you know, what is performing and what is not performing. But yeah, it's a valid point. I mean, if you're investing into really slow growth companies, like for example, you know, just a random example, IBM, if you're comparing IBM with Microsoft over the last 10 years, well, yeah, or you're going to you're going to underperform the market, right? So it is definitely a valid point And it's something to consider. And then the, the last thing number six taxes. Absolutely. This is definitely a reasonable argument against dividend investing. Taxes are, you know, a real thing to consider. We are, you know, to factor in when you're thinking about dividend investing and which account type you're choosing, you know, these are the main things. These six topics are the main reasons why people, why contrarians or dividend haters hate or trash on dividend investing. And it's important that you, if you're a new dividend investor, you understand why that is, because every single one of these are valid, but... You could put a but after every single one of these. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the most important one here because this is the most reoccurring thing that I always see is the total returns. So first it's important to understand what total return means. Total return is the capital appreciation. It's the price movement in the stock, right? It is that plus the dividend. The dividend is part of the total return and combined the capital appreciation plus the dividend is the total return for the investor, okay? And so if you just are looking at the dividend, then yeah, th that's going to impact the total return. And so what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through a few different scenarios 
and I want to walk you through four different scenarios and I want to take a look at different, you know, different examples or different parts of the market. So we're going to look at two different companies in the consumer staple space. We're going to look at two com companies in the communication services space. And then we're going to look at two others in the consumer discretionary space. And then we'll do two ETFs, one covered all cover call ETF and a, a dividend ETF. OK, and what I want to do is I want to show you some things that I look for, something that you can look for at a high level, very simple straightforward and it will help you understand the total return and what to look for when you're comparing investments all right let's start off with a few examples here first let's talk about a company here in Kraft Heinz this is a consumer staple pretty popular brand name I love their their hot dogs I love the you know the the Heinz uh, ketchup really great you know iconic brand but in terms of a you know company dividend stock it's not the best stock or at least Lately, historically, it's not been a, a really a high performer. But when I was a new investor, when I first started out investing, you know, this was, five, you know, investing in dividend stocks with a dividend focus about five years ago, I bought Kraft Heinz. You know what I did is I thought, oh, Kraft Heinz, Warren Buffett invests into it. All right, great. It must be a great, a great company to invest in. I looked then at what the dividend yield was. I was like 4%. Amazing. 4% dividend, like forever, you know, that's a, that's a great deal. And so that's what was going through my mind when I was first learning about dividend investing and I didn't understand the total return, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through a few things that you can look at when you're evaluating different companies. If you are going to invest in individual companies, this will take you just a, like a couple of minutes for each individual company. Some things that I would recommend you do when you're considering the total return is you wanna understand how the company is growing their top and bottom line. The top line is their revenue, the bottom line is their net income, okay? Revenue, gross sales, net income, you know, free cash flow, what they're, what they're netting, right? After all expenses, operating expenses, investments, et cetera, et cetera, okay? What I like to do is I like to go over to the earnings and I like to look and see, okay, how are they doing? How are they performing? What I'm looking at is I want to understand how is their revenue growing, right? Quarter over quarter. This is, um, let's do this so you, so you can see it a little bit better. This is the revenue year over year for, for each quarter. How is the revenue? Okay, the, the revenue is not really growing very quickly. Yes, it's a massive company. They, have, they generate a lot of revenue, but they're not growing their revenue. Okay, so that's one thing. When I'm thinking about a total return of an investment, is this company continuing to grow? Because if they're not growing their top line, they're not gonna grow their dividend and they're not gonna pay me more and they're not gonna increase their dividend, okay? So really, really important. Uh, another thing here, so a, a lot of the stuff that we're gonna look at here is in Seeking Alpha. So the first one was under the Earnings tab. The second one that I wanna look at is in the Growth tab, all right? So then we're gonna go to the Growth and I wanna look at, you can see it here as well, this is annualized. So over the last five years, they've grown their revenue negative, negative 0.3. Uh, 35. So yeah, not, not so, so great when it comes to the, uh, the total return in, in, in terms of growing their revenue, but you could say, well, Jake, they have a 4% dividend yield. Well, yeah, they have a 4% dividend yield, but they're not growing their revenue. So what, what are they going to do with that dividend? And then the next thing that I want to look at is what's happening with their net income. Okay. The net income is going down. So how are they going to pay me as a dividend investor? How are they going to continue to increase their dividend? Well, the simple answer is, well, they're not. Or they're going to take on more debt and then pay their dividend through debt. But, you know, you don't want that. I mean, that's that's not, not ideal either. Okay, so this is Kraft Heinz. This is one example. And I want to, I want to say once again, I, lo I love the brands. I, you know, it's just the stock is not... Really, it's, it's not the best dividend stock in my opinion. Let's take a look at another example here. Let's look at PepsiCo, Pepsi. I don't drink Pepsi, I like Coke, but I do love my Lay's potato chips. Love, love their chips, I love their snacks. I, I think, uh, you know, but anyways, when looking at a company like PepsiCo, trying to compare apples to apples here, let's look at their earnings here. Let's take a look and let's see, okay, they have not missed on their earnings in, you know, since 2018, what is their revenue year over year doing? Okay, actually not too bad, right? Growing at five, six, 7% on average per quarter. Okay, so this is good. Um, let's take a look now at their growth. 
with their growth, they're growing their annualized, their growth, their growth are growing at 5%. Okay, it's not too bad. What about their net income? Their net income, they're growing at about 6%. I really, really like to see this. Annualized over five, 10 years, they're growing it. Over the last three years, maybe they had acquisitions or something. I, I you know, you'd have to dive into this, but they are continuing to grow. So as a dividend investor, I love to see this and I love to see they're growing their top line and their bottom line. And this is important for the total return, which is the capital appreciation plus the dividend. Now let's visualize this here and make it a little bit easier. In Seeking Alpha, what you can do is you can chart this and you can compare the investment compared to other investments. We could even compare this with the S&P 500 if we wanted to and we could add it. Um, you do have to use uh, premium to be able to do this. I believe there's other websites out there. I personally, I, I like Seeking Alpha. If you do wanna sign up with them, I do have an affiliate link in the description below. You'll be able to get 50% off. But yeah, no pressure. If you wanna use it, it's down there. If not, that's, that's cool. So the, Metrics here that we're looking at, this is just the price return. Okay, so the important thing here that you have to understand is if you were to look at this from like, you know, Yahoo Finance or, you know, let's say for example, Google Finance, and you were to go and you were to type in these here, you could take a look at Kraft Heinz and Pepsi, and this is just showing you the price action, the share price of the stock. This is not looking at the total return. And as we discussed, the total return is the price plus the dividend reinvested. And when you compare this, the different investments, this is massive. This is so impactful. And if you compound this over decades, it just, it's, it's difficult for my small brain to even comprehend it. But the important thing that I wanna highlight here is when you're thinking about investing, whether it's dividend investing or not dividend investing, growth investing or something in between, you have to make sure that you understand the difference between the price of a stock and the total return of a stock. The dividend relevancy here, it is absolutely relevant when it comes to calculating the total return for these investments. But the argument is, well, if you just wanna focus on total returns, why even look at companies that pay a dividend? Well, for me, I wanna generate passive income and I want to invest into businesses that have steady you know, competitive modes, have steady free cash flow, and are paying me as a shareholder in the form of a growing dividend. And that's why I invest in a dividend stocks. And could I get something similar, or could, could I get a higher return only investing into growth stocks? Yeah. Am I gonna get more volatility? Yeah. It really just comes down to what your goals are. But the dividend here, the dividend is absolutely relevant to the total return when fact, when comparing different investments. Now, just for for you know the sake of it, let's go ahead and let's take a look at VOO because I'm sure there's going to be somebody asking this. Well, what what about VOO? Well, VOO is right here, and when it comes to let's take a look at this. Let's look at the price return. This is just the stock price. So if you just look at the stock price, VOO is crushing the other two here, right? Crushing even Pepsi, right? Just really really beating Pepsi. But if you look at the total return, it's actually, yes, it's still beating it by a significant amount. But for me, as a dividend investor who's focused on cash flow, yeah, I can live with that. I can live with, with this return while I'm still you know, being able to sleep at night. I'm generating income. I'm not having to sell my shares. I don't have to time the market. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Now, not everybody is going to be the same way, and that's completely fine. Okay, but this is important when you're when you're looking at this. Let's take a look at another example here, and I'm going to speed through uh, speed through this. This is Lumen Technologies. This is a company I used to invest in a CenturyLink back in 2018, early 2018. I had no idea what I was doing. I invested in a craft. I invested in a CenturyLink because you know why I invested in them because of this. I saw this massive sexy dividend yield, and I was like, oh, I'm a dividend investor. I got to look for dividends but I didn't really understand the total return. And that's what we're talking about today. So let's take a look at this. Um, really quick, the earnings, how are they doing with their earnings? Not really consistent. They're missing their, uh, their EPS uh, quarter over quarter quite frequently. Their year over year revenue growth is just horrific, like horrible, but they pay, but they pay a dividend. Yeah, but um, let's take a look at the growth here. The growth revenue annualized over the last five years, it is positive. Over the last 10 years, just, yeah, nothing really. Um, let's take a look at the net income. 
They've grown their net income. They have done that. Okay, so let's take a look at another one here that I wanted to compare with Comcast. Okay, Comcast, great. Let's take a look at the dividend. All right, Comcast has a, has a lower dividend, but let's take a look at the other things in terms that are relevant for the total return. Let's take a look at their earnings. They've never missed their earnings. It's like they're a good company or something. Uh, full disclosure, I don't invest into Comcast, but uh, if I had a long-term time horizon, it would definitely be on my radar. Um, but yeah, so they're they're be, they're generating a ton of revenue. They're really good at forecasting their their earnings. Let's take a look at their growth here. Growth, revenue growth, seven and a half. Ten years, seven and a half. So you could just expect roughly between five and seven and a half percent revenue growth, which would then likely translate into something with the dividend. Uh, net income, they're growing their net income. So how does how does this compare? How does Comcast compare with Lumen Technology? They're both communication services, just complete night and day, right? When you're just looking at the price price return, it's completely different. Now let's take a look at the total return. Total return, it yeah, it's still night and day, but Lumen pays an eight, nine percent dividend yield. Well, yes, but yes, but with Comcast this they pay a dividend they pay a healthy dividend and they're growing it year over year okay so in my opinion this is how dividend investors what they get wrong is and myself included when i first started out i would just look at the dividend yield and i fell trapped to the yield trap right if you really want to be a successful long-term dividend investor you want to focus on the total return okay that's that's absolutely key okay let's take a look at another example here with Kohl's. Kohl's, uh, let's look at their dividend really quick. 6% dividend yield. Let's look at their, their earnings growth here really quick. Their revenue. Revenue's doing pretty good. A little bit inconsistent with their, their earnings meets and beats here. Not so so great. Let's take a look at the, uh, the growth here. The growth of revenue. Look at this. Company is, is not growing their revenue. Like, what are they doing? I mean, obviously, they're in a declining industry with, with retail. But, I mean, it's just, as a dividend investor, this would scare me, right? Yes, I get a 6% dividend yield, but what's going to happen with that dividend over time? Now, they do have good net income, but I would be curious, how are they getting that? How are they improving their net income? Are they cutting costs? Are they closing stores? Are they slashing prices and costs somewhere else? but it's impacting their revenue. They're not generating their top of line. So it's something to do. I don't know the business well enough to really talk about it in deep detail. I'm just sharing high level, you know, things to look at. Now let's compare it with Nike. Nike, 1% uh, dividend yield. You might think, oh, Jake, a 1% dividend yield. I don't know about that. Now for me, who's planning to live off the dividend in the next couple of years, Nike is not a company that I'm, I'm interested in. But if I had a 20 or 30 year time horizon, absolutely. So let's take a look at Nike, for example. Um, Nike, pretty consistent with their, their earnings. This is this predictability is, is really good to see. Their year over year earnings growth, uh, revenue growth, excuse me, not bad. Even through the pandemic, they've actually done well. Um, let's take a look at their growth when it's annualized. The revenue, they're growing the revenue at about 6% annually. Their net income, this is massive. They're growing their net income at a really, really fast rate, which is enabling them in, to increase their dividend year over year. Okay. Price returns of Nike versus Cole. Kohl's here. Uh, just complete. Look at this. This is just the price action. Look at this. Now, this, is, this will go down because Cole has a larger dividend. And what did I say over and over again? The dividend does matter. The dividend is part of the total return. So this, this percentage, this gap should shrink slightly. Total return, it, did it shrink? Let me see, price action, 300, 400. Yeah, it did shrink. In percentages, it, it absolutely shrunk, but it's still just massive, right? When, when looking at the two different companies, this is maybe an extreme example, right? But, um, yeah, it just shows like investors, if you were to invest into Kohl's for the next 10 years versus investing in a Nike, 
in terms of your dividend, yeah, you would generate more dividend dividend income, but once again, what were those cons? You know, paying taxes, for example, dividend cuts, all of those things. So it's something that you want to be mindful of when you're a dividend investor and when you you know, you have to have that total return on your mind. All right, so let's take a look at one last example here. These are pretty pretty popular cover call ETFs. I wanted to take a look at QYLD. This is the uh, Global X cover call ETF. It tracks the NASDAQ and DGRO. This is just a random example. Take it with a grain of salt. It's not an apples and apples comparison. It's just an example looking at the total, total return, okay? So I'm um, not apples to apples. DGRO, it, it is more technology and growth focused. That's, that's why I chose it over like SEHD or VYM or another one. Okay, so looking at the net uh, price return, DGRO is crushing QYLD, all right? But now when you take a look at the total return with the dividend reinvested, uh, it's, here, wait, let me go back. Um, 64 and 23, 23. Okay, so yeah, it, it does change it. Um, but you can see, even with the dividend reinvested, right, the total return of DGRO is just destroying QILD. And this will only continue to compound and grow. If you watched my last Review My Pie, I had somebody that was investing primarily in the Roth IRA, into QILD and other covered call ETFs for the think it was like a 20 or 30 year time horizon. This is why I, you don't do this. The total returns matter and yes, the dividends matter, but the investment type as well. Like if you have longer than a five-year time horizon, these cover call ETFs are not the right choice, in my opinion, because the total return is so important, okay? So when you're looking at this, when you're thinking about your investing strategy, even if you're reinvesting the dividend, right? Look at this. This is with the dividend reinvested, okay? Really, really important. So even if you're reinvesting the dividend, even if it's in a tax sheltered account, Roth IRA, the total return, that's what you need to make sure that you're keeping keeping your eyes on when you're, when you're a dividend investor and you're thinking in decades and long term. I wanna use one example though that I think is pretty cool, okay? So this is a one-off nuanced you know, thing here when the company has a higher dividend yield and is actually outperforming. So I, I wanted to show this here. I thought it was pretty cool. Let me, let me show you this. So I'm not advocating for that you go all out and buy Altria Group. You know, it's a sin stock, it's a tobacco company, right? They're the devil, yada, 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 whatever. What I'm saying is that there are some kind of, you know, there are exceptions to the rules, okay, when it comes to this. With the dividend, you know, with the higher dividend yield, actually outperforming. Take a look Take a look at this. Over the last 10 years, Coca-Cola and Altria Group, the price return, you've actually done better with Coca-Cola. But if you look at the total return, they're actually just right even. Look at that. 121 versus 120. Absolutely incredible. And if you really want to see it get crazy, take a look at this. The total return from Altria Group is destroying Coca-Cola. It's almost 3x. Absolutely incredible. But if you look at the price return, they're equal. Look at that. They're almost exactly equal. But with the dividend, it almost 3x's it. Dividends matter, everybody. Dividends are relevant. They're absolutely important. It's important to understand, you know, both sides of this. Some investors are going to say, hey, what you're doing is wrong or why are you doing that? Trying to, you know, make you defensive and, you know, explain why you're doing something a certain way. The total return is important. You could, there's many different ways of how you can generate that total return. But I will say that dividends absolutely matter, but you don't want to just chase yield. We saw that with a handful of different examples, different sectors of the market. Understanding both sides will only help you to make the right decisions for you. But once again, I would always advocate if you're brand new to investing and if you only understood half of what I was saying in this video, first start off with div with you know, dividend ETFs. And then as you learn more about investing, you understand more about your risk tolerance and your time horizon, then I would then shift to then consider, if you want to, to invest in individual stocks. But there is absolutely nothing wrong with just going 100% ETFs. 
In fact, in my Roth IRA, in my 401k, in my HSA, I have 100% allocation to ETFs, low fee, broad-based ETFs, and I couldn't be happier. But in my dividend portfolio here in M1, I do have individual companies, and I love being a shareholder and following these companies and continuing to see my dividend income increase year over year. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video is helpful. I hope that you learned something new, and I'll catch everybody in next week's video. You know what? I think we're gonna be friends. Can everyone say hi to my friend? That's crazy. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner. <laughs>